So you might have noticed, I've made a few Poi videos in my day, and because of that, there are some things that I notice in videos that can grab or deplete attention. And today I wanna to share with you my top five things that you can do to improve your videos and make sure that your audience gets the best experience out of them that they possibly can. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, bringing you the love of Poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, we are talking about things that will help benefit your world if you make videos. That's right, I'm gonna give you my top five tips for improving your Poi videos. Before we dive in, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So I've made a lot of videos in my day. Uh, some of them have been acceptable and some of them have been pretty mediocre. I've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't in terms of keeping an audience's attention as well as just quite frankly the things that I look for in other people's videos. And of course there's plenty of stuff that I think are kind of no-brainers like say you know you probably want to use a tripod to shoot all your stuff uh, and you want to make sure that your framing is solid so that people can see everything that you're doing. But I think there are also several things that I tend to look for that might not be immediately obvious, but that actually make a surprising amount of difference in the ability for your audience to grab onto what you're doing and want to stick with it through the end. And I will fully admit that not all of these are things that are applicable to everybody's work, but I will say that they will give you rough guidelines for creating videos that are going to have more of an impact on the people that you most want to reach. So, with all that out of the way, let's talk about my top five tips for improving your Poi videos. So, tip number one, trim your loose ends. So how many times have you seen a video where somebody is setting up their camera and then they walk away and they start spinning? Maybe they have to fix their framing or something, they'll walk back and move the camera a little bit and everything, and then they'll get moving. I see this a lot on Instagram, especially in people's stories, and it's usually the first thing that clues me into the fact that somebody is doing this as a casual hobbyist rather than trying to do it seriously. Because here's the thing, is those initial few seconds where somebody is watching are absolutely essential for whether they're going to make the choice to keep watching or not. If that time is being eaten up by you walking away from the camera, then quite frankly, you've already given away a lot of your most valuable real estate from a uh, perspective of a person's interest level, you know? And especially Especially today when video editing apps are so easy to acquire and so many of them are free, there's literally no reason why you can't trim off those first five seconds so that you can give your audience what they want that much faster. And of course the same should be said for the ends of your videos too. Uh, it might be you have some really clever thing that you want people to see or some fun mistake that happened or what have you that is worth them sticking it through to the bitter end and everything. But you know, also if you're doing that thing where the end is you just just marching right back up to the camera and turning it off and everything, again, that's just kind of dead space that a person could be using to do something that's more interesting and entertaining to them. So trim off those loose ends in the front and the back, and I guarantee you, you're going to give your audience a better experience for it. Which also brings me to my next tip, which is Grab somebody's attention within the first five seconds. So the game has changed now that Instagram has become the primary platform by which people share uh, flow videos and everything. Granted, a lot of that content still winds up on Facebook and everything, but almost always the person is posting to both Facebook and Instagram at the same time. And the same rules apply here. You know, I remember when Instagram first launched video, you could only get in 15 seconds worth of footage, right? And it was one of those things that almost right away, it was starting to train the audience to expect something to happen right away. Unlike YouTube, where I've got a good 15 to 30 seconds to grab your attention before you might move on to the next thing, on Instagram, as you're just you know scrolling through your feed and everything, you've got maybe a couple seconds to give somebody something to pull them in before they're just gonna scroll right on past. Now, I do wanna put an asterisk in this because a lot of people then are going to be tempted to put their best stuff up front. Like if the biggest hook of your video is in those first five seconds, 
you're going to have a problem holding on to people for much longer than that. So give them something to pique their interest within those first five seconds, but make sure that you also have something that is worth waiting for if the video is much longer. And I'm sure that there's going to be some difference of opinion here, and there are plenty of people out there that are more than happy to have those like loose ends at the beginning of the video and or to have to wait around a little bit to see what the video is going to be about. And here's the thing, those are not the people that you need to convince. They're going to be tuning into your content regardless. It's the people that are going to tune out after five seconds that you really want to make sure that you have something there to grab. Because those people who are willing to sit around for however many seconds it is to get into the meat of the video and everything are going to do that regardless. Whereas those who will turn, turn out after those few, first few seconds and everything are the ones that are most likely going to help your channel grow over time make sure that you're catering to them. Okay, so this next tip is a big one and I cannot tell you how many people I see that get this one wrong, and that is to watch your lighting. So of course, the ideal for many of us is to have that you know beautiful golden hour lighting or even maybe you wanna do something wherein you're a silhouette against the backdrop and everything. Both of those things look absolutely gorgeous and I'm a big fan of, but there's a lot of people that don't stop and think hard enough about said lighting before they get into shooting that video and it really hurts them on the end of the people watching it. So what are some examples of this? Um, one of the biggest ones that I see people getting wrong with this is that their videos are really badly backlit. That is, they're not actually trying to do that thing where you just see the silhouette of them moving and everything. Instead, what's happened is they've just plopped down the camera and pointed it at themselves and they're trying to break down their trick and everything and the light is coming from behind them rather than in front of them. So you don't actually get that clear a view of what they're doing. And I mean, that sucks, because the whole point of this is to show people what you're at and everything. So taking an extra couple seconds to gauge where the lighting is coming from and setting up your camera appropriately is really important. Also on this topic, 90% of you out there that are shooting footage with LEDs are doing it wrong. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that in most cases, what you're doing is you're shooting your LEDs outside or in a dark room where there's no ambient lighting whatsoever. And all we can see is really the movement of the heads of your props. And you know, it might be that in some cases, this is a thing that people want to do because they feel a little bit insecure about their own appearance or how they're moving or what have you, and they don't necessarily want that to be front and center. But here's the thing is so much of spinning, when you take it away from the context of the body that's producing it, it just doesn't look as interesting. This is a huge problem in general when people perform with LEDs. They assume that so much of what is going on is going to be what the audience captures from the props and everything. And that's absolutely true in the case of, you know, programmable POI or other props, for example, where you get to see the pictures in them and everything. But it's not true of any other version. Like, you really have to have some context of what the body is doing in order to stay glued to that. So it might seem paradoxical, but if you are, you know, spinning your poi indoors and everything, make sure that you've got a light on in the room. Not enough so that it swamps out your LED poi, but enough so that we can actually see what your body is doing with them. And somewhat related, my next tip, contrast matters. So this is a lesson that it took me way too long to learn. But basically it goes like this. By the same way that it is easy to divorce the poi from the movement of the performer when you're shooting with LEDs and everything, it's also really easy to go the opposite way. That is, when you're shooting outdoors in full sunlight and everything, make sure that your props and your body stick out from your background. You know, this was something that a friend called me out for a while ago. He noted a flow video where the color of my pants was identical to the color of the sidewalk behind me and everything. And that meant that it was really hard to puzzle out what my legs were doing. You know, at the time I kind of pushed back on this and everything, but then I also realized as I produced more videos and everything, just how important that contrast actually was especially with the poi. If your poi are disappearing into the sky behind you and everything, then people can't really tell what those tricks are that you're doing. So make sure that you're using sets of poi that are going to cleanly show your audience what's going on with the prop, just as much as they can clearly see what's going on with your body too. 
All right, and my final tip for improving your POI videos, and this is really, really, really specific, and it's only going to deal with a subset of y'all out there, but I'm gonna give you a brief demonstration, and I'm going to show you uh, one clip of a video repeated, and I want you to think about which version of it looks more professional. Now the thing we're gonna add on top of that is our butterflies. That is when you take a step to either side, boom, you're also gonna reach your hand out. You're still doing a butterfly and everything, but you've got one hand that's further away from you than the other one. Now the thing we're gonna add on top of that is our butterflies. That is when you take a step to either side, boom, you're also gonna reach your hand out. You're still doing a butterfly and everything, but you've got one hand that's further away from you than the other one. Okay. So, I'm gonna guess that most of y'all out there are going to say that it is the second version that looks more professional. Now here's where I pull a rabbit out of my hat. Both of those video clips are exactly the same. The only thing that's different is how the audio is treated. So this is a really bitter pill to swallow because I think most people, when they consider making more professional quality videos, the first thing that goes through their head, of course, is their camera. And yes, the camera is incredibly important. But here's the thing. When you have bad quality audio that is being presented with good quality video, it still makes the result just feel not as professional, you know? And on the other hand, if you have really, really good audio with, you know, not terribly great quality video, then it instantly makes the video look that much more professional. So if audio is a component of what you're recording, whether it be vlogs, whether it be tutorials or what have you, make sure that you take some time to get decent audio. You know, in invest in a lavalier mic. Uh, learn the basics of compression and EQ and all of that. I guarantee you it's gonna be worth it. Controversial opinion, but I would say audio is greater than video in terms of producing a professional product because it's the thing that people don't know that they're queuing into, but boy howdy, do they ever. All right, friends, so those were my top five tips for how to improve your POI videos. Uh, I hope that they've given you all some stuff to think about, and uh, I also hope that now that I've mentioned them, as you see them appearing in other people's videos, these will be things that you are thinking about as well. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe so that other people can find this video, and of course, so you can help my channel grow. And of course, a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these amazing folks right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful people listed down in the description, make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Uh, if you would like to sign up to support this work that I'm doing, bringing the love of poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world, and teaching people how to be creative with their bodies, you can do so by heading on over to patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and signing up. You can get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future. Plus which, some cool behind the scenes and extra stuff gets posted there on occasion too, and you can get access to direct feedback from me. Yeah? Go check that out, please and thank you. Do you have tips on how to make videos more effective? Do you think I missed the mark on any one of these particular items? I would love to know. Please leave me a comment and let me know, and also let me know too, what is it that you like to see in POI videos out there? What are the things that make you most interested and engaged and are most likely to keep your eyeballs on? This is for my benefit as well as everybody else's. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Have yourselves a great week and I will see you soon. Peace.